Hi there. Before I get to today's project, I want to share some feedback I got on the last video I did showing how to maintain your tailstock. Now, one of the things I did was use some WD-40 to lubricate the threads on the quill. And I was told by a number of people that this is not the best way to do it, although I had done some research and believed it was. I had a number of people tell me to use graphite, uh, some lithium grease, a number of different things. And one of those things that was recommended was recommended by Randy, and it's this blaster dry lube with Teflon. I used that, and it works really well. Just a beautiful job on that. One thing I want to tell you about this is that when you spray it on, it sprays on clear. When it dries, it turns white. And I learned the hard way that when you spray this, because it's clear, you don't really see where it's going. When it dries, well, I have little spots of dry lube all over the place, so I need to clean that up. Another word about WD-40, our friend Harold told me that he had read that it's a good way to lubricate the bedways so that your tailstock, your banjo, will slide better, and it works very well. I hadn't heard of that before, and I'd always just waxed it, and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to, but this is working really well. So thank you, Harold, for that tip, and thank you, Randy, for this, and I appreciate all the feedback from everyone else, too. This is just the one I got because, to tell you the truth, Canadian Tire is a short walk away from the house, and they had this there. Now, for today's project, I forgot something. I'll just be a second. Sorry about that. I forgot to bring these pieces over. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this vase I did a little while ago, and I like it just fine except it's very plain. It's just bland. The grain didn't pop like I thought it should, and I want to put a band of pyrography around here. And I'm going to use this. I've got this block on a face plate. This is going to fit in there. It's not a jam chuck. It's not real tight. I'm just going to use the friction to drive it. And I put masking tape around the bottom just to protect the finish on here in case it spins on there a bit. Now that's going to sit on the lathe like this, headstock at this end. And then this is going to be coming in here on this end. And all it's going to do is just support it. It's not going to necessarily drive anything, but I've got this adapter for my one-way chuck so that this will actually spin. So as this is being driven by the headstock, it will spin. Let's take it over to the lathe now and see how we can make this work. Now the first thing I want to do is cover this Velcro pad with a piece of paper towel. I just want to make sure that I don't scratch the inside of the vase or destroy the Velcro pad. Just use a couple wraps of elastic band. That should hold it on there just fine. Now, put this in here. Bring this in to hold it. And that's running true enough for my purposes. I have an indexing wheel here so I can control how many degrees I turn for each piece. I want to put a line three quarters of an inch from the top and a second line one eighth of an inch below that. And I'll just spin it on here. Not the most accurate lines in the world, but they'll do. And below that bottom one, I want one inch. 
and another one at an eighth of an inch below it. Now in between these lines, I want to put dots every few degrees. I haven't figured out exactly what I want there. I made a tool rest, which is just a flat piece of plywood screwed onto a one and a half inch dowel. I turned the dowel to one inch so it will fit into my banjo. When I put this in place, I want to make sure once it's in there that I don't move it again because I need to retain that height. This allows me to take a pencil, lay it flat on there and make a mark. I want to make a mark on this line and then right below it on this line. Now the circumference at this point is about 15 inches. So I want to put 15 different segments on here. And 15 into 360 is 24. So I need to move it 24 degrees each time. On the middle row of these holes, each one is three degrees from the next one. So for that 24 degrees, I need to come around eight holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It should be right there. And now I can do the same thing, mark in the next spot, and move around until I have all of them finished. And I'll be back to show you the next step. Now I'm going to use my flexible INCRA ruler as a straight edge to draw a line from the this point on the top row to the next one over on the bottom row. And I'm going to draw one from the bottom to the top corresponding. And I'm going to continue this all the way around until I have all of them done. And that should let me end up with a diamond pattern all the way around the center. And I'll be back just as soon as I get all of these finished. Now that all the lines are drawn, I'm going to use this skew tip pyrography pen to go around and burn all four of these lines that go around the circumference as well as all of these lines. I'll start here. And this is going to take quite a while. I'll be back as soon as this is all finished. Now I'm going to be using what razor tip calls their fixed regular writing tip. What I want to do is just fill in between these two lines, these two lines, and in each of the diamond shapes. And I'm just going to do that by just touching it briefly, making basically a series of dots. Hoping to give it a bit of a textured look. All right, I'm almost finished. And there are just three things I want to point out. Number one, 
I think you can probably see it. There's smoke comes up every time I put this tip down. And it was actually getting a little tough to take. So I put this fan right there blowing away from me and that's drawing the smoke away. If I turned it in the other direction toward me, it would just be cooling the tip constantly. Second thing, I don't know how well this is going to show up because it's very, very little, but each time I put it down, there's just a little bit of moisture that shows up on the surface. I assume the heat is bringing up the finish that I used, the combination of sanding sealer, Yorkshire grit, and Hampshire sheen. And I'm real glad that whatever it is coming up there is not flammable. And the third thing is this flat wooden tool rest I made. It is so handy, supporting particularly my left hand that I use to support my right hand when I'm doing this because I'm so shaky. That helps a lot. So I'm almost finished with this. And when I'm finished, I'll take it off the lathe and give you a good look at it. And that's finished it. Now I thought it was still a little too bland with just the top band, so I put a couple of more little stripes around here just to hopefully balance it out a little better. I like it better myself. So I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, come back next time. In the meantime, click the like button, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. I hope you have a great day in your shop. Be safe. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. What? I want you to make me big again. I'm tired of being small. What are you talking about? You want it to be small. I know, but I'm bored. Nobody to talk to. Well, you made yourself small. Why don't you make yourself big? Because I'm not big enough to operate the keyboard. Okay, there you go. Hop on. Don't fall. All right, by the power vested in me by Adobe Premiere Pro, rise, young man. <laughs> young man. Cool. We could do this again sometime, right? Okay. Right. Don't bug me, okay? Because, you know, I can... All right.